Hey, it's Chris. This is the brand new Pitaka Flipbook case for the iPad. We're gonna unbox it. And after that, we're gonna continue the discussion talking about whether or not anybody out there should actually consider buying that M2 13 inch MacBook Pro and more. So Pitaka just came out with this Flipbook case for the iPad and they describe it as a to-go sleeve that opens and closes with the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard like a book, which is kind of funny because it doesn't look like a sleeve when you're just looking at the box or pictures online, does it? So the features here are supposed to be easy opening and closing, you got a minimalist style, holds all your essentials, and it's made out of premium materials. But as far as I'm concerned, it's really the handle on top that makes or breaks this thing. Because one thing I've never done is wake up and say, you know what my iPad really could use is a handle. But that doesn't really mean anything because Henry Ford's famous for the quote where he's like, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have told me a faster horse. Well, there's that handle front and center, and I think the idea here really is this. You can ditch the bag that you might otherwise have to bring with you, keep the portability and the ability to still bring a few things with you, your everyday carry items maybe, along with your iPad, but if you don't have to bring a bag, then why would you? So this is gonna sit in there, this is gonna wrap around, and then these are magnetic. Very cool, but of course, as you can see, we have some film that we have to peel off here. So the way that this is gonna operate is by some sticky adhesive. Probably not the end of the world, because I think anything's gonna peel right off of this without being too much of a problem. But as soon as you remove this protective film here, there goes the warranty. Now as I'm setting this up, you're gonna notice I'm just installing this right on top of my Magic Keyboard. That's right, it works with your Magic Keyboard and I love that because I love accessories that work with the Magic Keyboard. I'll link up a few others that I've covered recently down in the description for you to check out too. All right, so I got that installed and you're gonna be like, Chris, this looks a little goofy. Obviously, this would look better if you had the black Magic Keyboard on here. I didn't see an option to get a white uh, color here to match, but honestly, that's all right. I kind of like the Stormtrooper look here, so I'm not really hating it. Now, already, I'm seeing that there's a little cutout here for your camera, and uh, yeah, you can actually open that. I think it's supposed to be magnetic, but it actually doesn't stick all that well, so that magnet could be a little stronger. There we go. It's actually sticking a little better there. So 99% of people out there really don't make much use of the iPad camera, right? That's probably overdoing it. But for those of you that do, there you go. You keep it protected, but you can still use it. Now this is where your extra storage is gonna come from, right? You got this carbon fiber covered portion here. It's like an expandable pocket. You can pull that out a little bit and it's just a zipper here. So you can zip that open and you could actually fit a decent amount of stuff in here. Like it might be a little thicker than a pack of playing cards. All right, so let's just do this. I got a few things here that I might wanna take with me. I got some super chunky Beats earbuds. I love these things, all right? Those fit, but wow, that's a stretch there. Let's see if I can even zip this thing shut. Oh, there we go, they fit. It's a little bit bulgy, <laughs> but it does fit. All right, mission accomplished there. What about your phone? If you just wanna bring a phone, now I got a spec case on here. It's not the biggest case in the world, it's not the thinnest. All right, that should easily fit, absolutely. Or what about your wallet? I got a Ridge wallet here, that's my actual wallet and that's no problem at all. And then, you know, if I'm going somewhere, I'm likely to bring a Magic Mouse, maybe. I like a Magic Mouse with me. That's easily gonna fit in here. And then you could fit any number of different combinations of similar items. Not a problem. Uh-oh, one thing I'm noticing, though, is that this orange lining right here is getting a little bit chewed up already. So, you know, this is a first-gen product, right? And I think that's one thing the team's definitely gonna have to work on here. It's already showing some wear. I mean, I don't even know how that happened. I just took this thing out and that's what it looks like. Which I think is unfortunate because the rest of the materials seem to be pretty high quality. This is leather, that looks good, feels good, the stitching seems good. This is carbon fiber here, it's nice and tough, not gonna get messed up, but it looks like that orange strip there, not made out of the best material. All right, so I got a handle here now, I kinda turned my iPad into a briefcase, Definitely looks kind of businessy, especially if you match it with the all dark, the black here. The handle makes a little bit of noise when you're carrying it. Let me see if I can get that noise. Right, can you hear that? But it seems solid. I don't think I'd be worried at all about the iPad slipping out or anything. But the real question is, what is it like to use your iPad with this on? That's my main question. The second I saw this, it was like, okay, so you open this up, and oh great, I realized I just installed this first. This is why you read the directions. It's a little wobbly here. I think that's my fault, not the product's fault, because I can already tell these are supposed to go back here, probably, to balance everything out, have four points of contact, and keep that from wobbling. So that's my fault. All right, let me see if I can fix that. I'm just gonna move this back. When in doubt, read instructions. All right, so let's try this out now. There we go, uh, definitely not wobbly now. So there we go, fix that. All right, but look at this. 
the handle here is just sitting out. You can't tuck it under because then you are going to get some wobble. It has to stay facing you, facing out. Now, the question is, does it get in the way? And I would say, actually, no, it doesn't. Um, you know, I can feel it. It's almost like a, a palm rest, except it's not. It's not far enough back to be a palm rest. So, uh, But the, the thing I can say is it doesn't really get in the way. I mean, I can use everything. I can type here, and it's not a big deal. And I mean, it looks like everything else stays out of the way just fine. You know, your Apple Pencil remains accessible. So if you're an Apple Pencil user, and you've got the paper-like screen protector on like I do, then you got the Magic Keyboard, which is a must-have. For a lot of people, if you're serious about getting certain types of work done, you have to have the Magic Keyboard. It's just what works best. So maybe for some people, this is like the ultimate combination. Forget the bag. And when it's time to pack up and get out of here, boom, it shuts, magnets close, and you're out of there. That's a quick escape. I guess my main question here really is, is this thing worth $89? And by the way, it looks like suspenders for your iPad, sort of, right? And again, it would blend in better with the black Magic Keyboard. But $89 for this thing that's actually hard to categorize because it's not really a sleeve. It's definitely not a bag that this fits into. It's really just some leather that sticks to your iPad and gives you some extra storage. I don't know, I guess it mostly is gonna come down to do you like the looks? Because I think the functionality is very different and unique from anything else I've seen out there. And it's pretty cool to be able to, I think I could take with me, if I'm going to a meeting or a coffee shop, I think I could bring everything I would want in that pocket. And between that and my actual pockets, I think I'd be good to go. So it's just a matter of, do you feel like a dork with this? Or if you do, who cares? You know, if it works for you, I think this is actually pretty cool. I will say they really went with a business vibe here, like a business feel. This doesn't seem casual, right? So I think it really would make the most sense in a business environment, but if you have some place to be and you wanna bring the bare minimum essentials with you and ditch the bag, what a cool accessory. I'll link it up down in the description if you wanna actually check it out. Check me out. All right, it's always fun to explore a new iPad accessory, but I'm not ready to stop hanging out yet, so it's time to go the extra mile. Well, here's something. Should anybody, and I mean anybody, be buying the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro? Because if you want a MacBook Pro with the M2 chip right now, you have to get the new 13 inch. That's the only thing that has it. You can't get a 14 or a 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 chip inside. So a lot of people are gonna be like, well, that one is the one that has the M2. I have to default to that. That's the one I gotta get. Well, hold on a second. Well, this is actually really interesting to me, okay? Because a while back, seems like a long time ago now, I placed an order for a 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. But in between the time I placed that and the thing arriving, hasn't arrived yet. It's been like, I don't know, almost two months maybe. It's supposed to come on Friday, by the way. In between that time, Apple announced this 13 inch with the M2 chip. And my initial reaction was, maybe I should cancel my order and grab this one instead. And by the way, it's never a good time to buy a Mac, it seems like, because with all the Apple Silicon, they're just pumping out new Macs one after another. And honestly, you can just start the regret timer the second you unbox that thing, because it's not gonna be too long before the next one comes out. But you can't really complain about it because they're also good, but I'm digressing. But anyways, I was like, should I cancel my order and get that instead? And I thought about it and I looked at stuff and I didn't cancel my order. And that's what I wanna talk about. I think Renee's cheat sheet tweet here really summarizes things like why I haven't canceled. You go with the M2 for a faster single core and you go with the M1 Pro or Max for more GPU cores and heavier workloads and also double the media engines with the Max. Exactly. I, and I really feel like this conversation centers more on is that 13 inch really all that pro in the first place or have things evolved to the point where they really just need to retire it and get rid of it. If I'm buying something that's labeled pro, I have workhorse tasks in mind. There's a small group of people out there who are like, pro, that's like top of the line. And I just wanna have top of the line, so I'm gonna get the pro. But even then, you're, you're getting a good computer. Like, don't get me wrong, 13 inch, if you're upgrading from anything that's an Intel, and you upgraded 13 inch M2, that's gonna be a great computer. And that's not just a small little incremental upgrade for you, you know, it's gonna be really, really good. But for people out there who are definitely, for people that have anything with an M1 in it, it's gonna be a much smaller upgrade. So look, aside from getting only four terabytes of storage instead of maxing that out, I maxed out everything else about the 14 inch M1 Max, right? The MacBook Pro with the Max chip. Max it out and that is going to serve me better, even though that's old, it's been around for a while, right? It's been on order forever, still hasn't even come. That's gonna serve me with my workflow better than the new M2 chip. And on top of that, I'm gonna have the latest design, right? So the M2, it's almost like Apple's like, hey, we got some more of these chassis laying around, let's just stick the new chip in and get those out the door. We'll kind of like clean out the warehouse. I don't know if that has anything to do with how they actually made the decision. I mean, I'm sure not. 
but it almost seems like that, right? Because it's the old design. You're not getting the newest MacBook Pro design here. And that design is really nice. You're not getting the touch bar, right? So, <laughs> so maybe if you like the touch bar, if you love the touch bar, then the M2 13 inch really makes a lot of sense for you. And by the way, before you're like, who is that? When I made a touch bar video about tips for the touch bar, that thing is still getting lots of views and I get lots of comments. Don't watch it by the way, cause it has some weird camera angles and people kind of freak out, which is probably just gonna make you go watch it. Get a lot of comments about that too. But people are like, I love the touch bar. I wish Apple didn't get rid of it cause I really like it. So there are people out there that like it. And if they do, here's like your last chance to get a, a good computer with that in it. But here's my question for anybody that's looking seriously at getting the 13 inch with the M2. Are you just mostly interested in saving money? Because I think a lot of people, that's probably where they're landing. They're like, I want this pro, but I also wanna save some dollars, right? If that's the case, I honestly think most of you will probably be better served with the new Air. That's got the M2, great design, looks really cool, some new features. That's the direction I would head because the other side of the coin is not saving money, but saving time. And at some point, you know, especially if this is a professional workflow for you and you're buying this thing for your job, and it's going to earn you money, then it comes down to saving time. So with multiple GPUs and cores and stuff and being able, lots of memory, you know, the RAM to, to do more tasks at one time, it opens up new workflows instead of just concentrating on one singular thing, basically over on the M2 13 inch that you just can't do otherwise. And so if you're trying to save money, I would just consider downgrading, but it'd really be an upgrade. It would feel like an upgrade to me, to the air. If you're really interested in saving time and being more efficient and the money is less of an issue, absolutely go for the 14 and 16 inch, even though they don't have the new M2. Now the M2 is coming for the bigger sizes, 14, 16, it sounds like 15, which would be interesting. And so if you can wait, that's great. But for me, it seems like that 13 inch is really pro in name only. So if you're confused about whether or not you should get that 13 inch, I would say don't, just don't because if you're a real power user, you know that's not gonna do it for you and you need real power and you're gonna get the 14 or 16. All right, do you remember AirTags? It's been a while since I've talked about them on the channel. I've got a bunch laying around. I think I got four sitting around here, but I haven't really paid much attention to them ever since I ordered them, I made a video about it and they just kind of sat around. I guess I got one on my keychain and I got one you know, stashed in my wallet. Uh, but I haven't really thought about them. I haven't used them for anything. I guess that's good. I haven't lost anything that I need to track down. But here's an interesting story I came across. AirTags have now helped a Toronto man track down his stolen Range Rover. So this person had a Range Rover that was already stolen like a month prior to this, and they ended up getting a new one because I don't think they ever recovered the old Range Rover, it doesn't sound like. And why is that? Why was it never recovered? Well, you're like, Range Rover? Doesn't that have built-in theft protection and tracking? Well, the thief was able to disar disarm that, so that wasn't a factor. And when the thief got in, they threw out a bunch of stuff, phone, wallet, anything they thought might be trackable, traceable. Maybe they thought, hey, maybe this has an air tag in it, right? They threw all that stuff out, disabled the tracking that was built in, and got away. And what's interesting is it says that thieves were also able to steal the car despite him having placed his keys in a Faraday box. I don't know what that is which prevents criminals from remotely copying a key fob and mimicking the signal to unlock the car. Faraday box, I gotta look that up really quick. Okay, so a Faraday cage or a Faraday shield is an enclosure used to block electromagnetic fields. A Faraday shield may be formed by continuous covering of conductive material, so yada yada. Okay, blocks electric signals. But even then, these were too good, they got a hold of it. And so he gets a second one and he puts air tags all around. He put an air tag in the glove box. He put one inside the spare tire. He put one under the back seat. So he put three in there. He was like, this is not happening again. So the SUV was parked away from the garage. And then the next day, uh, the guy wakes up and his kid is shouting, daddy, daddy, your, your car is gone. <laughs> if this is the second time your range got picked off, what would you be thinking? Obviously these people are targeting this like on their route or something, but you'd be like, Again, what are the chances? But thanks to the air tags, he was now able to use Find My to follow the car to a metal recycling plant. And then he tries to call law enforcement, but he can't get a hold of him. So instead of interacting with thieves, which is not a good idea, probably he drives to the police department. And then the next day they told him they recovered nine cars. So this one person's air tags were able to save actually a bunch of people's cars. So this kind of has me rethinking my whole air tag strategy. I've had a couple literally just sitting around that I've never done anything with. I might as well just throw those in the car, right? Then it's like, you gotta go to the trouble of renaming them. 
unless uh, they'd be driving around and be called like Chris's keys or something. <laughs> Either way, you know, it has me rethinking using them because you don't need to tell you do. And then future Chris is able to look back to past Chris and be like, hey, thanks. Thanks for sticking that in the car there. <laughs> uh, yeah, air tags may be handier than I thought. Okay, before we get into this next story here, can I just admit something to you? Many times I've gone to sleep with an AirPod in my ear. I know that's not good because I've already read about the person who swallowed an AirPod while they were sleeping, but sometimes I listen to like an audiobook or something while I'm drifting off. And this story is interesting to me because somebody swallowed their AirPods because they thought it was a vitamin or a pill, which at first you're like, really? Who would mix those up? But as we get into the story, you'll be like, oh yeah, maybe that could have happened. So a celebrity in the UK accidentally swallowed their AirPod on Sunday, mistakenly consuming the Apple wireless earbud along with their vitamins. As you're looking at this picture here, it's obviously the stem that would fake you out here. I mean, the whole AirPod is fairly small, but bigger than a pill, but the stem almost looks like a pill by itself. And if you got all these pills in your pocket, which is what happened, the person reached in their pocket and just kind of gulped down the whole pile there, <laughs> AirPod included, weird things happen in life. People do things so differently and you never know what scenario is gonna pop up. So uh, the person who swallowed them said they don't recommend it. Uh, she didn't end up going to the hospital because she actually ended up throwing them up. And oddly enough, somebody asked her if they were still working and she said yes, but quote, it smells of sick. That was, uh, <laughs> that was what she said. <laughs> so uh, yuck, right? She was able to throw the thing back up and she said her throat was really sore afterwards. Well, yeah, it's like a horse pill. And this has happened before. Somebody in November, a TikTok user, admitted to having mistaken an AirPod for ibuprofen, swallowed it, and even though the thing was consumed, it's weird to be talking about an AirPod that was consumed, but it was consumed, that still worked too. And in fact, that one recorded a voice memo with some gurgling sounds inside the stomach. So, you know what? AirPods are pretty tough. Now, the person who was sleeping and swallowed the AirPod, I was playing with fire there. I know I shouldn't be doing that they had to go to the emergency room. So this absolutely has me rethinking whether or not I should be sleeping with the AirPods. I don't try to, you know, sometimes I just listen a little bit and take it out and go to sleep. And the reason is I don't wanna wake up my wife, right? By having it just blaring on the speaker. Any chance for the AirPod to go down the hatch yeah, I don't know. Well, thanks for hanging out with me for this video. Hopefully you guys found something that you might like. If not, it's just kind of interesting to see what all's out there for the iPad, right? I'm gonna link up some of my other iPad accessory videos for you down in the description, because I've covered a lot. And if you're looking for some new fun to be had or add some new life to your iPad, you should check those out. Otherwise, don't forget to check out our wallpapers. Those are linked up for you. Check us out on the podcast. That comes out on Fridays. That's like some behind the scenes looks at things. And don't forget we're on Twitter and Instagram as well. It's at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, in both of those places. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.